The Home Office announced the legislation change back in October and the first part of that comes into effect on the 31st of December and at that time if you're an owner of an XL bully dog there are a number of rules that you've got to comply with within the legislation and those rules are you have to walk it on a lead it has to have a muzzle when, when out in public or in a vehicle you can't breed from the dog you can't gift the dog abandon it or sell it in the last kind of um, couple of years or so Merseyside's seen a, a significant number of XL bully attacks probably most notably uh, toddler, Bellary, Birch, Oath and St Helens. Um, what steps has Merseyside Police taken in recent years to clamp down on dog bites and how will these new laws help kind of um, you police that? Yeah, so there's, there's already been legislation for quite a long time around dangerous dogs and when those type of in incidents happen, they fall within that existing legislation of uh, within the Dangerous Dogs Act uh, and our dog section is really proactive around educating but also reacting to those type of incidents as well. With those type of incidents we'll take a zero tolerance approach to it uh, and we will uh, use the legislation to its full effect. The, the the new legislation is specifically targeted at XL bully dogs and we understand that there are people with pet bully dogs who are perfectly fine, uh, really well behaved dogs and, and really responsible owners and this legislation isn't really about them but it does affect them uh, so what we're saying is if you're a responsible owner uh, comply with what the new legislation is saying and, and, and the, you, you'll be absolutely fine. If you are an irresponsible dog owner and you're not going to comply with the law, then Merseyside Police will uh, use the powers within that legislation. And the fact that we're concerned, Merseyside Police has the highest number of reported dog bites causing injury in the country. What do you think it's down to? I think it's down to a number of issues um, and, and the full causes for dog bites can be quite complicated. Um, but within Merseyside, I think what we do notice is sometimes people will have dogs and they won't necessarily give them the right exercise. So if you don't regularly walk your dog, you don't give it the right stimulation, maybe you've got a lot of dogs in a small property with a lot of children, it causes extra anxiety for the dog. And when a dog is more anxious, it's more likely to respond with um, aggression and it's a greater risk of biting. So I do think that that's a big factor. I also think one of the other issues is some of the breeders in Merseyside aren't registered and that also causes problems. The, the dogs that are used for breeding are often very stressed. That then passes on to the pups. The breeders, when they are breeding these dogs, aren't taking the necessary steps to educate the dogs, to socialise them, etc. And that causes issues with dog bites as well. So there's, there's a whole range of issues. I think our advice for owners would be is if you've got a dog, any dog, it needs regular walking, regular exercise. If it's a large dog, it will need more walks and more exercise, so particularly for something like an XL bully. And really don't leave your children unattended with dogs. We, you know, 25% of our victims of dog bites are children. And often that's when children are left unattended with a dog. And if you've got something like an XL bully that's a very large dog and a small child, the injuries can be catastrophic. So we, we really urge people to be careful around dogs. All dogs are capable of biting. A dog like an XL bully is often seen as a status symbol. Do you think Merseyside's got an XL bully problem? I think you're right. Some people do buy XL bullies as, as status symbols. Uh, not everybody does. A lot of people rehome them because that's you know the right thing to do in their minds with rehoming a dog. Um, I, I think it's quite a complex issue around XL bullies. I do think a lot of people in Merseyside have those dogs because of the status, and not necessarily because they want to provide what's best for the dog. And it really is about providing the right environment for your dog to prevent it causing injury to others and staying safe and under control. And as you can speak to Rooney. Um, there's uh, fears that the ban will drive um, illegal breeding of uh, the XL bully. What kind of uh, measures will those type police look to? Yeah, there's definitely that risk. With, with, with any new legislation, there's always the, the you know people in society who, who, who just don't want to comply with it and won't do. Uh, we we will educate uh, as much as we possibly can uh, as a police force, uh, and, and that's the first. That's our, our stance really between the 31st of December and the 31st of January is, is to educate uh, dog owners and, and, and give them some guidance and advice around complying with the legislation. In terms of breeding, there will always be that problem because it, it's financially lucrative, isn't it? But, but we will target those people. You know, we, we, we have intelligence feeds, we, the community will report things like that to us uh, if they see it and we will act on it as well. Our dog section are quite proactive and we will go out and we'll assess these dogs and if there are crimes, uh, offences being committed, particularly around breeding, then we'll, we'll, we'll be quite positive in our use of the legislation. One of the criticisms of the proposed ban is um, about um, identification of the XL bully. There's kind of fears that kind of crossbreeding the dog uh, will mean that it might not kind of count as as an illegal breed. Um, how, how, how are you kind of going to target that as well? 
So our dog legislation officers are trained to identify and type the different dog breeds. They've been on the national training through DEFRA and they're, they're able to identify those dog breeds. Um, we understand that some people are concerned that the legislation guidance around the type for that dog is quite broad and that a number of dogs that aren't necessarily XL bullies might come under that guy, under under that remit. Advice to people at the moment is to get your dog exempted. We believe that DEFRA will be running um, a, an exit scheme for dogs which aren't XL bullies once the, the, the initial exemption scheme ends or the, the window for it ends. There's, there's also kind of fears that um, just because the ban's kind of coming in that um, we're still seeing um, attacks and, um, and deaths across the country from, from dogs that are officially on, on, on the ban list. Um, how do you think kind of removing the, well, or putting the XL bully on, onto the list will, will drive down the kind of attack number? I think the prohibition of the XL bully will naturally reduce numbers. You will get many people that will no longer want to buy that dog because it's a banned breed. So as those dogs get older and die, that we won't have as many of them. We understand that some people will still breed them illegally. Um, what we would ask the communities to do is make us aware of those breeders and then we can take action to deal with them. We've set up our intelligence processes within Merseyside so that we can identify those reports of illegal breeding and our dog section will take action against people who are illegally breeding them and we'll work with local authorities to do this. Yeah, you mentioned kind of the, the help of the community there. Obviously, kind of police forces across the country are stretched and now there's this is kind of an, an additional thing that kind of the police have to look out for. How, how important is community intelligence when, when taking down illegal breeders? It's very important that, you know, we can't police without the cooperation of our communities and, and we want to work with our communities to make Merseyside safer. And we also want to um, educate our community as well to make them aware of the changes of the legislation so that they don't fall foul of it and that people who have got XL bullies as pets and who are taking the right care and the right exercise for the dogs can keep those dogs safely. If you get your dog exempted now before the end of the exemption scheme, which finishes at midday on the 31st of January, then you can get your dog exempted for £92.40. Um, after that date, if your dog isn't exempted by the 1st of February, it's an offence to be in control of one or to own one, at which point we have to seize that dog and we have to put it before the courts for them to decide on the fate of the dog. So we're urging the community to get their dog exempted. Throughout January, we will be taking positive steps to educate our local community to make them aware of the changes to the legislation. We've got leaflets and letters available for uh, our community members so that they can understand how the legislation affects them. And our media team have done some videos as well, which will be putting out on social media. And lastly, Chief Inspector Rooney, just um, what would your message be to anyone who still owns uh, an, an XL bully dog at the moment? If you are a responsible dog owner, uh, and it, it, go on to the DEFRA website, have a look at what these, these rules mean to you. Uh, if you comply with them, you won't hear from us. You know, if you are an irresponsible dog owner and you're not going to co comply with the law, come the 31st of January, the chances are that you'll, you'll, uh, you'll be speaking to us in the future about your dog and you're at risk of having that dog seized.